This video is about combining data manipulation steps using pipes in dplyr. Where we left off last time was learning how to combine multiple steps in a data analysis pipeline using intermediate variables. And this is a perfectly good and useful way to go. But as you can see, after even three steps, uh, we tend to produce a lot of variables that we aren't going to use in any final analysis. And so that can mean that if we have a longer data manipulation pipeline, we end up creating a lot of variables whose only purpose is to let us step through those data manipulation steps one at a time. If you want to avoid this, there's an alternative approach available in dplyr called a pipe. I'm going to go ahead and clean up uh, the work that we did last time and get us back and ready to go. And the pipe symbol is a percent sign followed by an arrow followed by another percent sign. And the idea of the pipe is that it takes the output from one command and passes it as the input to the next command. And this sort of approach has a long history in computing, uh, dating all the way back to the early operating systems. And to understand how to do this, we're going to start with a very basic example of taking the mean of a vector of numbers. So previously, to take a mean of a vector, we would first need the vector to start with. So let's call that variable x and create a vector with the numbers 1 through 3 using c for combine 1, 2, 3. And then to calculate the mean, we would say uh, the function mean of the vector x. And if we ran that, we would get out the number 2. So remember, the way that a pipe works is it takes the output from the last command and passes it as the input to the next command. And so instead of writing mean of x, we could also write x pipe, which again is percent greater than symbol percent to the mean function. And so it becomes the first argument in the next function. So if we run this line, we'll see that we get the same result. And so what's happening here is that the value x is being passed as the first argument to the mean function. And so this is the same thing as running the mean of x because x gets put in here by the pipe. If we want to add other arguments, they then get added to the function call. So let's say that x actually had a null value in it. Now if you remember the way in which we remove null values before calculating the mean is we would normally write mean of x na dot rm is equal to true. And so the equivalent here using a pipe is to write na dot rm is equal to true as the argument in mean. So here x gets passed through the pipe, it becomes the first argument in mean, and so this is then another argument in mean. And so if we run this, we'll see that everything works uh, like it's supposed to. So that's the basic concept. How would we actually use this in a data analysis pipeline? So when we worked with intermediate variables, we started with surveys, we did one step of the pipeline, we assigned the result to a variable, we used that as the input for the next step of the pipeline, we assigned that to a variable. Using pipes, we skip those intermediate variables and replace them with pipes that pass 
the results of the previous step through to the next step. So let's take a look at that for the same example we did with intermediate variables. And so we're going to filter the table to get just ds for the species ID, no nulls for the weight value. Then we're going to arrange the table to be sorted by year and then select only the columns uh, year and weight. So we can do this like so. Let's start with the table that we want to work with, that surveys. We then want to pipe that table into the filter function. And so we're going to write the pipe and then we're actually going to hit enter here. Uh, because the pipe is here, uh, R knows that we're just going to the next step. And so now we'll be able to read the steps uh, top to bottom. And so we're going to pass surveys into the filter function. So we're going to filter. And now we don't need the first argument. Right? So the first argument was always the table we were going to work on. That's being passed in through the pipe. And so now we just need the filter conditions that we want. And so that's species ID, two equal signs, quotes DS. So the species ID is DS. And no null values, so not with the exclamation mark is dot NA uh, of the weight column. And if we run this and we can click run anywhere uh, on either of these lines of code, we'll see that we get out the results that we want. Only Dipodomies spectabilis uh, and only uh, non-null weights. To extend this pipeline, we then add a new pipe to the end of this line. So percent greater than sign percent and hit enter and we do the next step in the data analysis pipeline. So that was arrange because we want to sort and we want to sort by the year column. So we want to arrange by year. And so now what's happening all the way through the surveys table gets passed in to filter. Filter then filters that surveys table to only have species ID equal to DS and no null weights. That filtered table then gets passed as the first argument to a range. And so that filtered table now gets sorted by year. We can run the pipeline again uh, and we can see uh, that it looks exactly like we want it to sorted by year. And then we have one more step in our analysis pipeline, in our data manipulation pipeline. And so we want to say percent greater than percent again and run that final step. And that final step was to select parentheses the year and weight column. So we can run this again. And now we'll see that we only have uh, those first, those two columns that we want, the year and the weight. And so then the last step here is that where we ended up with intermediate variables was having this named as a variable. We want to be able to store the output of this data manipulation pipeline for later use. And so uh, at the beginning of the first line, or typically before we even start, we could say, uh, the name of the final result. So that's DS weight by year. That's what we called it with intermediate variables. Uh, and then uh, we can assign the output of this pipeline to the variable DS weight by year. And if we run this, we will now get the same output stored in a data frame, just like we did when we worked with everything, uh, when we worked with intermediate variables. And for a lot of people, this is easier to read uh, because it says we take the surveys table, we filter it so that species ID is equal to DS and there are no null weights. We arrange it by year and we select the year and weight columns. 
Either of these approaches is equally good. It's generally a matter of taste and what others you're working with are doing to make it easier to communicate. If you don't like typing percent greater than percent over and over again, there is a nice keyboard shortcut for it, which is Control Shift M, which will automatically create the pipe symbol for you. So that's the idea for how we combine multiple steps in a data manipulation pipeline using R pipes. Uh, the pipe symbol takes the output from the previous command, from the command on the left of the pipe or the line above, and passes it through as the first argument to the next command, the command on the right uh, or underneath. And by doing that, we can string together multiple pipes to do a multi-step data manipulation pipeline.